Hello, pre-recorded Richie here. No, not that Richie from the Crystal Maze, as awesome as he is. I'm on about Richie, as in your assistant leader for the Fifth Hitching Cub Scouts. So, why am I talking to you on this video right now? Quite simple, really. As one of your activities for you to be doing in your remote sessions, it includes cooking a meal. Also, it's not just about cooking a meal, it's about cooking a healthy meal and about cooking a meal from another country. So the reason we have to meet these three criteria is because there's three different badges that we're doing it for. So we've got the healthy meal, that is part of your cooking badge. We have the outdoor, outdoor meal, which is one of your challenge badge requirements. And we have a international meal, which is part of your international badge. So I thought, well, if you could do this, if you could cook a healthy international outdoor meal, then you can meet all three of those in one go. Simple, awesome. One problem is though, I had to think quite hard about, hmm, what is a healthy international outdoor meal? And thinking about it and trying to put it into practice, it was going to be very difficult to do it in a live remote session with you guys. So that's why I've pre-recorded this video, pre hence pre-recorded Richie. So a couple of months ago, I was in India for work. I went to a place called Pune that's in a Maharaja state. I uh, had a great time out there, albeit working hard. And I was introduced to this food that was really, really good. It's really simple. It was basically invented in Mumbai for the poor people because there are a hell of a lot of poor people in Mumbai. And it's called Vada Pav, spelled V-A-D-A, P-A-V, which essentially means fried potato bun. So the Vada is like a fried food, or in this case fried potato, and a Pav means the bun. So, it is essentially a mashed potato ball, deep fried in some chickpea flour batter, then put inside a slightly toasted bun and served with uh, various different chutneys and a very small but very hot and spicy green chilli. Now, depending on who you speak to, you can have a green chilli with it, uh, chutney with it, you can have a red chutney with it, you can have a coconut chutney with it, you know. I'm just going to keep it simple and pick my favourite one, which is a green chutney, which is what we're going to be making today. So, in a minute, you'll see me out of this room and into the kitchen where I'll be starting making food. Now, just to let you guys know, because of limitations of cooking outside, what I'm going to do is I am going to help prepare this meal indoors but then actually do the final cooking outdoors so it still counts as cooking outside I could prepare it everything outside but it's just easy to do it inside it's also a lot more hygienic the fact that you've got a sink with soap and various other bits and pieces so I am going to leave you now and soon when I come back you will see me teaching you how to cook vada pav so stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna start cutting and peeling the potatoes because as we know, this is a potato style dish. So as soon as I'm making four vada pav, just got four reasonable sized potatoes in quite a small pot. I'll just show you with my hands, so it is quite a small pot. Just gonna take each one and using a potato peeler, just start to peel them. So when peeling potatoes, remember to peel away from you. You don't want to peel towards you, otherwise you end up taking your skin off. No. Also, if you don't have a potato peeler, you can do it with a knife. I've just got a big one here, probably use a small one. But again, make sure you always peel away from you like so. Okay, so I've peeled the potatoes now. Now these potatoes are a little bit big. So what I'm doing is, because the next stage is to boil the potatoes and we're going to be mashing them afterwards. We don't need the whole potato to be this size because we're going to be breaking it down with a mash anyway. So just to help it to cook, I'm just going to cut them in half. Just so that that will increase the surface area of the potatoes so they will cook faster when you're boiling them. So I've cut my potatoes now and they're all in the pan. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, remove some of the starch from them. So the best thing to do here is take some cold water, like so, Give a little swish, and then eventually, I've only got one hand, one hand here, so excuse fingers. You can just pour the water out. It'd be much easier to do this with two hands. You know, just do this a couple.
couple of times and that just helps to remove as I said, the starch from the outside of the potatoes. So the starch you'll notice because the water will go sort of like a very milky white colour that doesn't look very nice. So you just have to take some of the starch off. Just drop the potato there. Again, very tricky holding the camcorder and also rinsing out potatoes. Because as you can see, after I do this, the water's getting clear all the time. So most of the starch is off there. So I'm just going to put final water in there. And now, the potatoes are ready to boil. So as you can see, I've just started to boil the potatoes now. You see the gas there. Now again, just a reminder, I should really be doing this outside as it's supposed to be a healthy international outdoor meal. But because I've only got a finite amount of uh, gas and hexi stove, hexi stove cubes outside, I'd rather not waste them. So I'm going to uh, boil potatoes inside. It, is, it will take a while. If you're cooking mashed potatoes, it'll probably take like, I don't know, 20 minutes, half hour to boil, depending on obviously how powerful your stove is and how much water you've got and how much potatoes. So I'm just going to bring these to the boil. Uh, I'll show another video when it starts boiling and then uh, probably leave about 20 minutes to half hour now depending on how you like your mash most people when they're making mashed potato they'll uh, boil it for a fair amount of time then they'll mash it and want to make it nice and smooth and they'll probably add a little bit of milk and butter we're not going to be adding any milk and butter to this and we don't want to make it too uh, soft and mash otherwise it would be a bit difficult to form your balls I personally like my mash a little bit uh, harder so I like a few chunks with inside it. I know not many people like that, but I, but I tend to. So I'm probably only going to cook these for around about 20 minutes. So it's still a little bit hard and still a few chunks inside. Then it'll be easier for me to make my balls from them. So while this is boiling, I'm going to go on and show you how to make the batter. See you soon. Okay, so while we're waiting for the potatoes to boil, we can start working on the batter that we're going to coat the mashed potato in in order to make our batter. So from that, the main ingredient is this stuff here that's called gram flour, or beason flour. It's just like normal flour, but it's made with chickpeas, as well as just a normal oats. So we're going to use a bit of that. We're also going to add a little pinch of turmeric, uh, baking soda, and some salt. So, again, a bit, a bit tricky, using only one hand. So I'm going to add, just say about three... A little bit different. Three heat tablespoons, maybe four of flour, and then I'm just going to put this down so people can see. Just grab a little bit of turmeric. So a pinch of turmeric, you don't need too much. So there you see, just a little pinch, a bit like that. Then a tiny little bit of salt, just a few bits again, just a little pinch of salt, and then finish it off with some, if I can get the lid open, bicarbonate of soda or baking soda so again just a little pinch there you go I've got a big cube here see it something like that just a pinch that'll do probably won't probably won't need all of that let's leave that there so next stage is just gonna slowly add some water and then whisk it into a nice batter so just gonna get a cup if I can find a cup here we go that's handy As I say, with the water, just going to add a little bit at a time, like I've done there, and then slowly start mixing in. You don't want to add too much, otherwise the batter will go too thin, and then you have to try and add more ingredients. But obviously, if you don't add enough, then you will have it too thick so there it's quite stodgy that's quite fixed I still need to add some more water onto this so I'm going to pause the video now and carry on whisking until it gets a nice consistency and I'll be back okay so now we're starting to get somewhere 
as you can see there's a few little bubbles in the batter now it seems to be nice and smooth I've pretty much removed all the lumps and that is looking like a nice consistent batter not too much batter but that should be enough for what we need so let's just do the tip test where you just essentially tip the ball see how well it moves yeah that looks quite nice so that's probably about what you should have there's a couple little lumps in there so just to give it a little bit more stir and then your batter is ready right so these potatoes have been boiling for about five or six minutes now as you can see because i'm using the small pot potatoes are boiling already now we've made our batter as you just saw a minute ago or a second ago rather now the next step is to make our green chutney now with vada pav you can have various different chutneys with it uh, you can have like a coconut type chutney you can have like a big red spicy chutney uh, depending on who you speak to and depending on where you go in India you'll get served up all different chutneys so there's no real right or wrong chutney to use but my favorite one that I tried was the green one so I'm just going to show you how to make it here now this is probably the most labor intensive of a cooking but it is worth it so things you need mint leaves coriander some lime and green chilies also possibly a pinch of garlic ginger and you can't really see there but these are all cumin seeds so what we're essentially going to do you can try and blend this all in and mix it together into paste by hand that's going to take a while uh, but I'm going to use what's called a food processor which is over here or some people call it a blender or it's just a whirly thing as you can see there it's got a blade that chops things up and turns things into paste essentially so uh, just a word of advice if you do use this uh, remember uh, to be safe now most of these modern ones should have a uh, safety switch on it which means that if I was to turn it on with the lid on it would work however if I take the lid off as you can see it doesn't work and that's obviously to stop people from putting their hands in and chopping their fingers off so I'm going to be using this to make my green chutney and I'll be back in a moment right so first I'm just going to do a bit of prep I'm going to peel back the skin off the garlic make sure all of that is off it is a bit tricky but you should be able to do it there and I'm just going to chop it into a few big chunks remember the blender is going to do most of the work so I don't need to do loads of it got a little bit of cumin now the chilies again just pointing out uh, if you don't like hot and spicy food you don't have to use all of these ingredients ingredients here you may want to uh, f remove the chilies things like the cumin as well not necessary you know it's mainly as long as you've got say the coriander the mint and the lime they're, they're the three main things that you want really you know the ginger and the garlic is nice as well but you don't need too much of that so I'm just gonna prepare some of these chilies here now don't chop all of the chilies I'll tell you why later that's sort of like the delight to come from the end of this if you for those of you that do like spicy food but I'm just gonna take some of these I'm gonna say leave the leave the four biggest ones for the end so I'm just gonna chop a few here again don't need to chop them up massively because the uh, food processor will do the majority of the work right. take a bit of that, take a bit of mint that I've just prepared and I'm going to grab a little bit of coriander as well take the lemon, chop it in half can get my knife in. Okay. This is going to be the nice squeezy bit that comes at the end. All right. I think we're ready to go. Going to transfer this and try and not drop it on the floor. Going to throw in the coriander. You might want to take some of the stalks off as well. You know, you can leave the stalks in, but maybe some of these bigger ones you take off. So throw in the coriander and the chili and the garlic. I really need to hire somebody to do my filming because this is very very tricky trying to do all of this one-handed 
note to self. Okay, so there's a garlic in there, there's a chilli. I'm just going to put this down. Hopefully you can see, you might not be able to see very well. But I'm just going to put this in. Which way does it go? It goes that way. So again, clip it in, make sure it's safely in. And we can blend. See that is now blending. have a look so it's starting to blend nicely I'm now going to squeeze in some lemon juice into this or lime rather sorry you can add lemon actually some uh, recipes do say lemon I'm going to use lime because as well as the sharpness gives it that nice bit of extra zing so I'm just squeezing this into here one I'll do one for the moment put the lid back on see how we go. Can you see? Sort of. Didn't really mix very well so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a spoon and just mix it into the middle a bit because it's all still a bit hard. Sometimes you just need to pause give it a little shake because what happens with this whisk is it will generally go onto the outside. Now something you can also be doing this, just take the spoon, just taste it, see what it tastes like. Straight away, whoa, there's a bit of heat in there. This, if you like spicy food, could turn out really, really nice. I can taste the coriander straight away, very distinct to smell. The mint as well is fresh. Touch of garlic. But well, just added a bit more lime to it. Can take the second one now. Squeeze it in, and let's see how this goes. Now I'll let you into a little story. I don't know if you could hear me when I was doing that. So I'll let you in a little story. I never really liked spicy food until I met my. Uh, wife but she loves spicy food and she's converted me so that it's still looking a bit hard but with a little bit of a maybe a touch of water into that just to just to uh, thin it out a bit and a little bit more stirring and that should be really nice so I'm just going to pause this video here, try a few more things out, and then I'll uh, get back to you. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, so I've been working on this, uh, the uh, green chutney, just a little bit longer now. I've added a little bit more lemon, uh, just added in a little bit of uh, cumin and ginger. And as you can see, it's a little bit more wet now. It's a bit more paste or consistent. It's still a bit thick to how it should be, but I'm just going to leave it at because I still think that's uh, going to look pretty good. So, as for the potatoes... The potatoes are almost boiled now, so I'm going to work on the seasoning that you've got to add to the potatoes when you mash them and roll your balls. So for that, we use some of the same ingredients we had before. A little bit of green chilli, but again, chop it a bit more finely. Some coriander. I've kept the stalks as well. Uh, you don't have to use the stalks. I know a lot of people don't like them. I actually personally like the stalks. I can actually, I can actually eat them whole. Just a little crunch. That's very nice. Uh, also. A tiny bit of uh, salt and pepper for seasoning, some mustard, and again, if you want, a pinch of curry powder, and ginger, and turmeric. You don't really need to, but I'm just going to do it anyway. So, I'm going to uh, check the potatoes, and when they're ready, we'll start mashing. Okay, so my potatoes are ready. Uh, as you can see, I've already drained the water. There was no way that I was going to film myself draining the water. Just trying to drain the water with one hand while filming with the other would probably lead to me hurting myself with uh, boiling hot water. So, they're ready. Just going to grab my potato masher. There. And get mashing. So again, I'll turn the video off while I'm doing this. But as you can see, it seems to be mashing quite well. So I'm going to turn the video off while I'm doing this, and then I'll show you when it's done. 
All right, so now I've mashed the potato. It's uh, a little bit thicker than what you normally have, and it's a bit drier, so I wouldn't recommend eating it like that because the fact that there's been no milk or uh, butter added to it, it probably won't taste very nice. But now's a good time for us to start adding our ingredients. So I'm just going to take the chilli, coriander, then just get that all in there. Then I'm also going to just very slowly add some of the other ingredients. So I'm going to put the can with that. Hopefully you can still see. So, just a pinch of mustard powder. Very small pinch of a curry powder. Only a tiny amount of that. A little bit of pepper. And again, a bit of salt just for seasoning. Probably add a little bit more mustard powder because there's not too much in there. And then a very, very small dashing of ginger. And a little bit more of our friend turmeric. Okay, so I'm just going to keep on mashing this, trying to get it all nice and mixed in as much as I can so it will take a while but it will be worth it so you just want to essentially keep on mashing until if you take a spoon flour you'll see a little bit of coriander maybe a hint of yellow from the turmeric and the mustard so you just want to try and mash in as much as you can so when you make your balls you won't have one ball that is plain and tastes nothing and you'll have another ball that's full of spices and flavours and it's going to uh, blow your tongue off because it's far too hot and spicy so I'm just mixing this in now, and it's mixing in quite well actually, it's uh, taking a bit faster than I thought, maybe because I'm awesome at mashing, but I know that I'm not a good cook and I'm not awesome at mashing, so maybe I'm just getting a bit lucky. Okay, so, just going to see that now. As you can see, you can see all the green in there, it's all nicely mixed in, and that is now ready to move into our next step. Uh, to make our potato balls. First I'm just going to let it cool down a little bit because it's still uh, steaming a little bit as you can see. So it's probably a little bit too hot to handle but once it's cooled down a little bit we'll move on to the next step which is making the potato balls. See you soon. Okay guys so the mashed potato has cooled down a little bit now so what I've done is I've taken it out from the uh, tin and I've put it on this bread ball here. Now I've just put a little bit of more of that uh, gram flour uh, down that's just going to help the potato not stick to the board. In the meantime, I've also uh, cleaned the pot and put some oil inside it. So it's just a bit of vegetable oil. So I'm going to start heating it up now. So with vegetable oil, this is obviously uh, can be a bit dangerous. So make sure that uh, an owl does, does this with you. And definitely do not let it get too hot. So if you see the oil start to smoke, then it's far too hot. So you need to turn it down. So you need to have it uh, higher temperature. So if you do do uh, fried chips home, great. But obviously, if you have it too cold, then you're going to have a big, horrible, oily, greasy food sweet that you don't want. But if it's too hot, you could end up doing some serious damage. So make sure you definitely do this one uh, with an adult. So going back to the potato, I'm just going to take a lump. So again, make sure you've got clean hands. And I'm just going to roll a ball in, out of it. So I'm just going to put this down by the side. see there you've got a potato ball now these balls uh, I've probably done a bit too much potato here but these balls don't make them too big kind of like a, a, big and a bit bigger than a golf ball but probably a, a bit smaller than a tennis ball so around about that size so I'm going to see how many balls I can get from this I was hoping to do four but I might end up getting five I reckon I'll get five from this lot. One's a little bit smaller than the others, so I'll just take a bit off the others and add to it. Not looking too bad actually. So remember, if I do get a bit sticky, you can easily just add a bit more flour to it, if you want to. 
Again, just a bit more flour, it's in a mixture, that's just going to help them not get as sticky to the pot. So I'm just going to put the camera up in a moment because I'm nearly done I'm trying to get them all the same size and they're not far off actually. It's probably a little bit too big to that one. Just going to wash my hands because my hands are now filthy. From this lovely looking potato mixture. And there we are, so we have five round balls ready to go, ready to be deep fried. So now, this is the last part that we've done inside, because remember we're doing an outside meal, the actual cooking of this is going to be done outside. So, in India, uh, a lot of the people will generally pre-prepare this stuff at home, and then they will take it out to their street food store, and then they will fry it up and serve it outside. So that's essentially what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to transfer stuff outside, and then I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Okay, so I've transferred everything outside now. I've got the oil done and it's just starting to get hot. As you can see, it's not steaming, but it's bubbling nicely. So what I'm going to do now is just put this on low to make sure that it doesn't spit out too high. And also zoom out a bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm just going to take one of these potato balls, dip them in the batter, make sure they're fully covered, and then just drop them inside the pan there. And it should, hopefully, start to cook. Well, that's the aim at least, anyway. So they're a bit big for this, so I'll probably need to fit them over at some point so they cook on the bottom half as well. But I'm just going to do one at a time because it is quite a small pan and then you cook them until they go golden brown on the outside. And then obviously once they're golden brown on the outside, uh, show you, uh, you can start eating them once you've done the bun. So I'll uh, cook this and then speak to you again soon. Okay guys, so I've just finished cooking the batter pav. I'll be honest with you, it hasn't quite turned out as I'd like it. They have buttered up nicely, although the batter's starting to fall off, but they're still nicely cooked and still in a round ball. So I'm just keeping them to the side. What I am doing now is, I am just doing some toast with them. So, these bread rolls, you just spray a little bit of the oil on top of them and you can just toast them lightly, as I've done here, on either side. So nothing too big, just lightly toasted. And then from there, once they're done, you can uh, serve your vada pat. Okay guys, so one other thing I forgot to add, but I've just rescued it. Remember I kept a few full chilies and I said I'm going to keep them to lighter. Dip the chilies in a bit of batter and sprinkle some salt over them and then put them in the fryer. And they are the chilies that you serve with your vadapa. Okay guys, so finished cooking now, now ready to see how well it turns up. So I'm going to take my vadapa. Take my batter rather, the potato, put it into the bun, see the bun is nicely toasted, put it there, and the chilies, as I take them to the outside, they have just got a nice little salted crisp batter on them, it's actually come out quite nice, the chilies have come out much better than potato. So. I've got my wife here with me. What do you think, wifey? Lovely. Lovely, you like it. I'm not paying her, by the way, to say that. She actually does like it, which is quite incredible. So I'm just gonna take some chutney, add it onto the potato, like so. But then before I eat, I'm just gonna try one of these chilies. You see me? How does that look? Yep, see myself. Now, they are pretty hot. I'm starting to feel it now in my tongue, but they do taste really good. So, that is Badapa, my version. Sure, a lot of people can do it much better than me, but I hope you enjoy making it. I'm going to enjoy 
Now, into my burger. Or Bombay burger, as they say. Thank you. Mm. See you again soon. Bye bye. Hey guys, pre recorded Richie here. Back. So, just running this final little concluding number post cooking the meal just to see how things go. It's kind of like a review, really, see what went well, what didn't go well, etc. So, Vadapav, it actually tasted really good when I cooked it myself, and considering that I've never cooked it before, I've eaten lots of it before when I was in India, but I've never cooked it before, I think it went all right. Uh, the bun was fine, the chilli in the batter and the salt, very good, potato mash was nice. One thing that didn't go well was the uh, battering of the potato, uh, as you saw by my video a little bit earlier, the batter was kind of uh, flaking off, and so some of the batter that stuck to it was crispy and quite nice. However, uh, other parts of the batter, you know, was a bit soft, the bits that fell off, so there was no point in eating that because it wouldn't have tasted very nice. Uh, best part of it, without a doubt, was the uh, chutney. Uh, couldn't believe how wonderful that tasted, and it was just so simple to make. Just mint, fresh mint, fresh coriander, fresh green chilli, and some fresh lime. Lime. A couple other things added as well, but couldn't really taste it. It was mainly those four things that I discussed. So those four things into a blender. You add the freshness of the mint and coriander. You had the heat with the chili, and you just had the nice sharpness and zinginess of the lime, and it just all brought together really well. It was a really that, that went really really well. It did. So hopefully we could perhaps have a have a go at cooking this in cups one day. Or we could try something else. Maybe you guys have some other ideas of healthy international foods that we could cook outdoors. But I'll leave it to you. So, thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.